Today, we are diving into one of my absolute most favorite features in ClickUp, custom views. And after watching this, you know exactly why. Now you might be thinking custom view, it's nothing fancy. Oh my God, you would not believe how much power is in there and how undervalued this feature really is. If you are tired of drowning in task overload and wish ClickUp would just show you what you need, like right now, this is going to be your game changer. A total game changer for productivity, a total game changer for focusing on what needs to get done. Custom views are like having your own personal command center within ClickUp. You can take all of that information that is living in your workspace and display exactly what you need and how your brain best processes information. Whether you want a simple to-do list that only shows you your most urgent tasks or a client tracker that highlights exactly what needs attention today, you can build it and really simple. What you're about to watch is a snippet from one of my free ClickUp webinars where I break down powerful features like this one. And if you're loving these tips and want more productivity, tips, tricks, hacks, trainings, webinars, whatever you want to call it, the link to join our next session is waiting for you in the description. And now let's jump in and transform just how you use ClickUp. Now, the first thing I wanted to make sure you know right in the beginning, Memote. Memote is possible in two different very Variations. That's our first one. Memote is once a button right up here. You can find this anywhere and everywhere in ClickUp. So if I go into a space level and I'm actually in a list view, there's the Memote button. You can choose what Memote does. If it's Memote for your comments, your subtasks, your checklists, all of it. Memote ensures you only see your tasks. Your team tasks are gone. Everything that is not assigned to you now suddenly disappears. Little bit of a downside, and that's actually where we are coming into the next feature already, is when you turn on Memote, it stays on. It is everywhere, no matter where you go, in any kind of folder, in any kind of list, this me mode stays on. Where this feeds into our next feature is the everything view. I love the everything view and I was um, surprised out of the last webinar we did that some didn't know what the everything view does. The everything view itself shows you everything. Every little space, every little folder, every little list, everything that is happening. A little bit of a downside, your guests do not have everything view. Now, when I say guests, I mean full on guests. I don't mean company guests that are still paid. So anybody that is free in your account that you do not pay for, that type of guest in ClickUp does not have everything view because they can't be added to spaces. Now, how these two features connect, the everything view with the Memote, you can see it's turned on right here right now. However, if I go into another list, it's not turned on. Memote is off here. If I go into everything, into my task list, it's turned on. And I just told you, when you turn on Memote, it's on everywhere. So what's happening here? In this specific case, we set up a custom list view, little hint that might be our next feature we are talking about, where we went in and actually customized this view. So this specific view was set up in a way that I have a daily running list of my tasks. And now when we go into customize this view, you have a whole bunch of different settings in here where you can choose how you want things to be shown. Under the layout options, we turned on the default Memote. Whole bunch of stuff happening there. Memote, using the button on the top right, 
turns it on across your whole workspace and stays on. If you are in a specific custom view, which we dive into here in just a second, and you turn it on in the custom view settings on top under layout options, you default it to Memote. It is only going to default to Memote in that specific list. Now, what does that mean? That means you potentially can build a list of tasks that says my tasks. Perfect running to-do list of what's overdue, what's due today, what's due tomorrow, and you default it to me mode, which means if you go there, you see all of your to-do tasks. If Amanda goes there, she sees all of her tasks because it's me mode. She is the one going there, her tasks are the ones shown. So with that, you can build kind of like an interactive to-do list that is based on who is logged in and who is looking at it. With this, I already gave you a little bit of an idea when it comes to custom lists. We got a couple of things that are getting now really fun. Custom views is this fun stuff up here where we can click the view button and build things. Custom views is a different way of showing the same information in different views. That means it also follows the ClickUp hierarchy. If we put a custom view in everything, I'll show you visually here in just a second, it pulls information from all the spaces and all the folders and all the lists underneath. It always follows that hierarchy of ClickUp. You can also build a custom view in a space level, which means it only pulls the information from that specific space, those folders in that specific space and those lists in those specific space. Same play, you can build a custom view in a folder and it's going to pull only all of the lists in those folders. Where that is important is if you build a custom view and you build a custom field, you pull a custom field into that view as of right now, I know ClickUp is working on this, it pulls that custom field up. Custom views, again, same information, different view. You've already seen the list view, this is what you see behind. We got the Gantt charts, we got the calendar views, we can pull in docs, we can do the Kanban view, we can have forms. Forms, however, are not available all the way on top because it collects information that needs to go into a list. So a form is only connected to a list. We have table views, we have all kinds of views. Where I want to start you today so you start getting a good understanding of custom views is a specific list view. What this does is, for example, in everything view, with everything going on everywhere, a perfect custom view is a my task view. We have the use case of I just need a to-do list. I just need to know what I need to get done today. So how we do this is again in everything view which means only full member have access to this capability and this feature. We go into view and we choose a list view. If you prefer a Kanban view or I think they renamed it finally it used to be box view. Um, you can do so too. The filtering is going to be the exact same thing. So let's do this. My daily tasks. So you name your list view. What do we want to have happen in this specific custom view? We already talked about that this is a me to do list. So we'll default this to me mode. Only my tasks are shown. I don't need to know everybody else that's going on. What kind of other things do we like to see here? We don't need to show closed in there. I do want to see all of the tasks, no matter if they are housed in other lists and the subtasks. By the way, great feature that will doubt move the view. We didn't have that in the past. Um, I do like to see subtask parent names. That's the little um, breadcrumbs on top of your task that tells you where that, what the main task name is, but also the task location. You saw how this just popped up in here. When I turn this off, I'm like, cool, but where is that? Um, sometimes we can tell by the list view 
but that's going to change here in a second. I like to know which project those tasks are from, especially when you have a long collection list. Just turn on the task location and you see exactly what this is. I know this is for my podcast. Um, if you are following a client delivery setup like I teach us, you will know exactly which client it is. We don't need to pin the description. I think for now we are all good on this one. Um, you can pin this view, meaning it stays over here on the left hand side, all the pins come first and then it might put a whole collection of views if you have so many that it doesn't fit in there. You can turn this into a private view which means only you can see it and the people you invite to this view. And one thing that is a nice setting is protect view meaning when you work with a team only you can change it and the ones you add to it that are available to um, that you tell they get added rights. So either way, they can just view and duplicate or they can do full on edit changes. That's where you can lock your team out from just changing things around. Rough settings are done. Let's save this. Now I'm somebody, I just want a to-do list. I just want to be able to see a list. So visually these boxes do not work for me. With that, let's go into the group status. This is where we start to really customize how this thing looks like. And we turn off the group by list, which now means we have Let's save this. Yes, you can turn auto save, save on too, which means every time you do a change, it automatically saves it. We just turned off the group by list. As you can see, it took off all of the boxes that told me where this thing is. If I turn it back on, you get these boxes and it tells you exactly where it is. However, we turned on location. We know where it is. We don't need the boxes. Bye. It is n a nice clean to-do list of there's our task one with this due date. Now this is grouped by status. Little sidetrack for a second. I have a YouTube video for you that dives deep into status versus stages. To explain status, status answers the question, is somebody working on it or not? Meaning to do in progress, Waiting internal, meaning I'm waiting for a team member to do their thing so I can finish my work. Waiting external, meaning I'm waiting for a contractor or the client to do something. A potential proof status, it, this needs to be checked and complete. Everything else is stages. Now with this, we have this sorted by a status. We can change the sorting of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break my tongue on this one. My German does not want to do these. You can change them simply by switching these two between ascending and descending. Did I say that right? I think I said that right. What this does is it goes by how you set up your statuses and it switches it top, top to bottom. So based on how you see your statuses in that setup, it's just gonna flip it around. Now we have the to-do on top. An easy adjustment too is cool. I have to-dos on top now, but there's a whole bunch of open dates, not no due dates. I need to know what's actually important right now. So when we hover over due date, look at that, Thursday, and there's actually past due to. Same we can do with priority. So as you can see with these list sortings, we already start to really customize this view and you can choose what you want to sort by first. So I can easily, we have a sorting by due date and by priority and I'm like, hmm, priority is more important than due date. So we'll just flop these around and now suddenly it sorts first by priority then by due date. This is simple filtering and sorting in here. And here you have it, the incredible power of custom views 
in ClickUp. And I promise you, this is just the beginning. There is so much more possible using ClickUp custom views. So you see why I'm so obsessed with them? They are absolute magic to turning your chaos into clarity. And as you've seen, you can completely personalize how you interact with your tasks and projects. Whether you need team-based views where everybody sees what matters most to them, or process-based views that keep your workflows running smoothly. ClickUp adapts to you, not the other way around. This was just a snippet from one of my free ClickUp trainings where I share a ton of more strategies like this. If you want to join me for free in one of my next sessions, the sign up link is waiting for you in the description below. And if these tips helped you, hit that like button and subscribe for more productivity tips and hacks. And don't forget to check out any of my other videos where I share even more time-saving ClickUp features. You'll be optimizing your work like a pro in no time. See you in the next video.